Good morning. Good morning. It's just taking a few minutes to get everything shared. Well, let's say a few moments rather to get everything shared. All right. Good morning. Let me see. Who do we have with us? Oh, good morning, Keith Oliver. Mr. Oliver, good morning. Sister Dorothy, good morning, beautiful minister Linda. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Jennifer. Morning time. I love the way you all greet each other. All righty, we've taken some time and replied and shared. Good morning, Rose. <clears throat> and all of that good stuff. So what I would like to just get started this morning. We're going to jump right into Matthew. We're going to be in chapter six still. We're going to do verses 11 through 14. So as you're getting your coffee or tea or water or whichever drink of choice that you, you have, we have our latest announcement on the screen before you. Of course, we are so excited and ready for our upcoming second annual fall book study brunch. It is the first of this type of event, although it is our second book study. Our guest panelists will be there eagerly waiting to engage with you, answer questions. Um, we are going to be discerning our book that we have traveled through since last August. We will be finishing chapter 13 and 14 in person, in person. JMS's first event, in-person event since two years ago, since March of 2020. Due to um, COVID, we, we went virtual, um, have enjoyed every minute of it. This event will be February the 19th. And for those of you who will be joining us virtually, <clears throat> We're gonna start at 10 a.m. instead of 9.30. We're gonna start at 10 a.m. instead of 9.30. So I don't want you to get online at 9.30 and think, oh my God, they're not on. Yes, we will be just at 10. And so you see the venue there. Um, I did cut the capacity, um, the guest list down by 50% due to COVID precautions. Um, we're gonna have our meals boxed. Um, there will be nothing touched by hand, no editable item anyway, comfortable seating, um, very nice audience in the room. And you see the number there to confirm. I will say at this time we are at capacity, but if you are interested in coming, 
just call that 832, I'm sorry, text the 832-342-7587. Because from time to time, individuals may, um, you know, can't make it and they let me know that and a seat uh, or space becomes open. So if you're interested, please continue to send your text to 832-342-7587 to confirm your seat. And I will let you know if one comes open. So masks are required. We're going to have hand sanitizer, Lysol. We're going to do everything to keep you healthy. Um, nice room spread out between each guest. But we're going to move forward and we are going to close this book out with a bang. Even if you have not joined the book study and you're interested, it is a wonderful book for your Christian walk. It is a wonderful book as you journey into intimacy with your father. It's one of those must have. I will say we have thoroughly enjoyed it and it has enhanced our life. Discerning the Voice of God by author Priscilla Schreier. Please, please, please put that in your, your um, hands. We will have several copies there for individuals that may be interested but had not purchased the book. We will have copies there at the brunch. All righty. Let me stop sharing that. Good morning to you. Also this week, we, uh, let's see, January 26th. Okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow is JMS Soul Healing Session. So if you are available tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., join us. Join us for our first Soul Healing Session of the year. Facebook Live, 7 p.m. All right. And that would be it for the month of January. January is over, guys. It is done. We, we, we're counting down another year. Another year. So if you have your Bibles, turn with us to Matthew chapter 6. We have been on a kingdom journey. Our first GMS teaching session for the year which was back on January the 8th, um, we opened up a new series of teachings dealing with the kingdom. And we have been in this Wednesday morning prayer <clears throat> moment, um, learning of the kingdom now for quite some time. Probably the last quarter of last year up until now, we started in Matthew, now we're up to chapter six. We started in chapter five. So today <clears throat> we're continuing in the Lord's prayer. And we're gonna go ahead and complete all the way down to verse 14, although the prayer ends in verse 13. So let me read, starting at verse 11. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into, to, into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And then verse 14 says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you, period. And I'll tell you why I added verse 14 in just a second. So we have um, just dived right into this Lord's Prayer, and we have been soaking it up, y'all, for the last, since this year. This will be Wednesday number four, okay? Wednesday number four. And... Starting at verse 9 to verse 13, God says, in this manner, therefore, pray. Here's your template. Here's your blueprint. This is what prayer should look like. This is what prayer should include. This is how you want to set your mind when you pray. Here are the main structures. Okay. So he starts out in verse nine 
what an appropriate outlook of who you're talking to. The intimate terminology of father, and not only any kind of father, but a heavenly father. One to be revered, he's holy, he's awesome. And we went through that. You go back and, and, and check out that teaching. We did the whole prayer moment just on verse nine. So the example of how to pray starts out, out with you recognizing who you're speaking to, his place, his position, his sovereignty. Okay, so an appropriate address when we pray. First example. Second one is a perspective shift to align prayer according to his agenda, God's agenda. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the creator of this whole show. He's the creator of the entire universe, the earth, even us, and have designed a perfect plan for everything he created. I remember using the example, you know, the individual who created a phone, created it for a purpose. Um, the individual who created water bottles, created it for a purpose. The creator of anything has something in mind for that creation to do. Okay, and it's created with an intent. Picture frames, whole pictures. Elephants were created to do what elephants do. You know, um, the creation of a giraffe doesn't say today, I think I want to be a shark. No, giraffes were created for a purpose. Water, land, everything we look around us, divinely created or created by someone on earth light bulb was created so we can see. So when we say appropriate introduction to our father in heaven, thy kingdom come, he created that too. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His creation is, is both heaven and earth. All of it belongs to him, even you and I. So the verse 10 lines up the perspective of this prayer. God, what do you want to do? I want to surrender to your will. Then we get into verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. How does that look like in a, our ordinary prayer? How is that an example for us to pray? Give me what I need today. The word teaches us. You can't do anything about yesterday and tomorrow is completely out of your hands. Yes, we can plan. Yes, we can project. Yes, we can prepare. And we should. But the point of the matter is tomorrow is completely out of your hands. So give me what I need today. And here it is for your kingdom to come and your will to be done today, just today. Help my mind today. Give me what I need to be who I need to be to my family today, on this job today. Father, I'm working this business that you bless me with. Give me the favor I need today, just today. The provision I need today. Because the mindset is that we've already surrendered to his will. We've asked his kingdom to come. So give me what I need to stay in alignment with your will for my life. Give me the attitude I need for today. Give me the words I need for today. Give me the perspective I need just for today. Because God, I don't know what's coming my way, but I need this thing to stay lined up to your will Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Designed for purpose. Just today, we've learned in our book study, and I'll just show you what it looks like. This book is completely awesome. The last two chapters we did, 11 and 12. Oh my gosh, just go to our YouTube channel or um, our website, Just For My Soul. 
and um, just listen to the book study. We, we did chapter 11 and 12. A portion of it talked about God doesn't show us the whole plan of his will for our lives because we couldn't take it. And we get upset when he doesn't answer because it's not for us to know. And she talks about stay in the now with God. Just today, that's what this is reminding me of, something the author said, just today. Align me to fulfill your plan, your kingdom to come, just for today. I want to be dependent on you today. Okay, so that's what this verse 11 is giving us an example and a blueprint in how we pray daily provision. Then in verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Okay? When God forgives you, sin is no longer credited to your account. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Um, our teaching session back on January 8th, you might want to refer to that if you are studying um, intentionally and appropriately, as we talked about when we kicked this year off, of verse 12, God uses the same principle of doing things and he will do the same unto you, depending on how you do it, with several things, not just forgiveness. But let's just stick right here with forgiveness. Forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That is, I need you to, I need you to think about that. I need you to, woo, I need you to hold on and like suck that one down. Okay. <clears throat> it it gets me straight. And I'm not um making small or discounting or neglecting to understand the intensity of some things that's been done to people that they will have to forgive. But you gotta get your heart, your perspective, your mind, and do a whole lot of prayer because there are some grievous things that's been done to people. This scripture is saying that by his strength, you can forgive. Okay, because how God forgives you is attached to it. That's why um, in getting a revelation of that scripture, and he repeats it in verse 14, that's why I added verse 14. It said it twice, back to back, 12 and 14. I'm real quick to forgive. Now, that doesn't mean trust is reestablished. That don't even mean that the relationship is reestablished, but forgiveness is done immediately. And when that thing raises up, I don't care what the offense is, continue to forgive over and over and over. I mean, you have to talk yourself down. I don't care how much it hurt, I'm going to forgive. I don't, because God is going to heal me from the hurt. I don't care um, um, how much that disappointed me, I'm going to forgive. I don't care what that, I'm going to forgive just like I want to be forgiven. And the bondage that unforgiveness intended to grip on your mind, not only unforgiveness, but pride and offense and um, bitterness and anger. See, unforgiveness comes with all of that. That's why our father is so dead set on saying child forgive. Because with the demon of unforgiveness come a whole bunch of his cousins, okay? Pride, self-righteousness. I would never, yeah, you, you might not do that, but you're going to do something, okay? Pride, self-righteousness, bitterness, anger, resentment, offense, just grit. You think about it. You rehearse it. You tell everybody in the world about it because you can, whatever you're doing with it, self-justification, or just to, to make yourself feel good, it's like a dark black hole when you refuse to forgive. 
And the other person may have prayed and asked for forgiveness, received God's forgiveness freely and gone on about their life. And you just approved, boom, just shriveling up with unforgiveness. And sometimes things go on for so long, you, you tend to forget what you're mad at. Or you just block God's healing process and he has a supernatural healing for that thing, but you want to stay stuck. You want to stay in self-pity. You want to stay in, oh, what happened to me? And baby girl and, my, and, and brother, you ain't the only ones. Whatever it is that's been done to you. Okay, you're not in a solo ship. Let it go. Whatever it is, because if what happened to you is bigger than the blood, you're in the wrong religion. I don't care what it is. It ain't bigger than the blood. It's not bigger than his miraculous power of healing. If it is, you're in the wrong religion. You're in the wrong relationship because you're saying I got to hold on to this thing because you can't do nothing with it. You're in the wrong lane. You might want to try another one. Many of them out here. Okay. Nothing is bigger than his miraculous power, his blood, his healing, his infinite and divine ability to restore you and build you up. Let it go, whatever it is. And he's going to use that same critique and critical spirit when it comes time to forgive you. And Lord knows, I don't need that. I forgive in a hurry. Okay. Again, don't mean that trust is restored. Don't mean that the relationship will ever be the same. Because sometimes it's not meant to be. But forgiveness is necessary every time. All right, I'm going to move on and jump off that soapbox. So as we pray, verse 12 is giving us an example of having the posture of forgiveness. We're not going to go into the presence of our father holding anybody hostage. And then here we come to prayer. Father, please forgive me. Okay, Holy Spirit be right. Okay, verse 13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let me stop right there. <laughs> one um, study resource I was looking at, it says, it said, um, he said, come on, y'all, let's get it straight. Like the enemy is smarter than you are in your earth, your human form. Okay. He's been studying your weaknesses all your life. He knows exactly how to get you. Okay. He, he didn't outthought you on that thing, how to just line up the temptation for you to trip into it on your weakest day. We have to ask God, okay, that presumptuous sin. I, I, I got it. I'm stronger than that. I'm just going to walk out here like can't nothing trip me up. No, no, no. We have to ask God to please hold us that we don't fall in temptation on the journey fulfilling your kingdom purpose, your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. You're using me when you get ready for this plan, why you created me as the creator, my, my, my little slot in this thing called life. While I'm on that journey, don't let me get tripped up in this presumptuous sin I think I got it. I'm not asking for protection. And he comes in and gets me with offense, sexual immorality. He comes in and get me with greed. He comes in and gets me with whatever. And some of us, including me, done got got. And we have to get back in line with that depending on him daily, including saying, Help me not slip into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one as I am on the journey to fulfill your will on earth as it is in heaven. This day, okay, that's the mindset of prayer. Then it's 
stop. It's um, ends in the second stanza of verse 13, pretty much how it began. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory for him. Starts with the kingdom, ends with the kingdom. About his kingdom business. And in the middle of starting with the kingdom and ending with the kingdom, we're saying, just give me what I need today, Father. Remove all unforgiveness and all of its cousins that comes to block up my heart and my blessings <clears throat> and keep me out of foolish, common, presumptuous, Seeing, so I can stay on this path that you put me on for your will and your kingdom. Then it closes back out like it started. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Help me do my little piece in the middle. Because you are my creator. And if I stick close to you day by day by day by day, I'm going to easily slide into and fulfill your divine purpose, your kingdom plan, and why you even created me. In the name of, oh, Dirt, look, I'm ready to close it out, y'all. Verse 14. So the prayer ends and verse 14 goes right into, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. And 15, I should have added that in the text. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. Period. right there in the story. That's said twice because the demon of unforgiveness comes with destruction for your soul, okay? The demon of unforgiveness comes with destruction for your soul and everything around you. Okay. It'll take your peace. It'll take your happiness. It'll take your joy. It'll take your health. It'll flood you with all of its demonic cousins. You won't even think straight about things. You will lose God's perspective. And you will be a subpar representative of him on earth. That's why he says it over and over and it is not his image whatsoever, but we want to be called child, children of God. Genesis says, I'm created in your image. Really? No, no, no. Because he forgives us. That's why he died. Okay? So that's for me and for you. And don't think the enemy is not going to keep coming with offenses and opportunities for you to get self-righteous, for you to get hurt, for you to get stuck in a fence and ultimately not forgive. So set your mind, your heart, your will, and everything else inside of you on forgiveness. This is the word of your heavenly father. I'm just a messenger and I got to live it out too. Okay, let us get it together. Let us get it together, all right? Now, as we started out this year saying, hey, we were going to hide the word in our heart from Wednesday to Wednesday, meditate on it, think about it, and hey, let's go ahead, let's do verse 14 and 15, so you'll know that next week. The previous weeks, I come back and try to quiz you, but we've only been doing one verse, okay? Today, you got, because we did five verses, so to four verses, one, two, three, we did five verses today, 
So today, our verse to rehearse verses will be 14 and 15. 14 and 15. We also started out the year saying that what we learn, what we receive, we were going to shoot into the next generation as we're praying for our generations. And this morning, I want to invite you into something else. And I wanted to wait to um, the last Wednesday, which is today, <clears throat> of the month. We here at Just For My Soul Ministries is we are consecrating, okay, consecrating. That means you're laying something down and devoting more time to God. We're consecrating and committed to every Wednesday this year. I waited to the end of January because I know many of you may be with um, either your church fellowship or discipleship groups or our households doing some type of beginning of the year fast and or consecration. This is a weekly, every Wednesday consecration. I'm inviting you into if you choose to come. 6 a.m. every Wednesday to 6 p.m. Okay, liquids only. And that would include your coffee, teas, juices, water, smoothie, if you choose a smoothie, broths from soup, like chicken broth from a soup, as long as it's not solid food, plenty, plenty of water, and committing to starting out with us in prayer as it is 6 a.m. right now, praying throughout the day. And there will be some Wednesdays we're going to have a theme to continue to pray throughout that day. And today we'll pick up one as well. We'll pick up our memory verses. Um, 14 and 15 as that thing to rehearse. 6 p.m. tonight, 6.01, you have dinner and do whatever you, you normally do. But throughout this day, not only keep the verse in your heart, but pray, talk with God, take your Bible to work with you. At lunchtime, have your little smoothie or chicken broth or, or juice or whatever it is you're doing. Read your word, meditate. Cry out to him. Okay. So we're inviting you in. I can't say 52 weeks anymore because we're down four, four minus 52. So we got 48 weeks left every Wednesday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. liquid only. Join us in this consecration. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day, our, our glorious one, our magnificent one. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Dear God, not only for our lives, but for everything we've been praying for. For this world, God, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. For leadership, God, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. In households, in individual mindsets, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. God, we ask you to forgive us. We ask you to forgive our sin, God. On a daily basis, Father, we slip. We come to you and admit. And Father, this morning we ask as we pray, reveal to us Reveal to us in our hearts and our minds if we're holding anything against somebody else in the form of unforgiveness. Yes, it may have hurt it. Yes, it may have disappointed. Yes, it may have taken our breath away, whatever it is. But Father, we know and we confess that you are more powerful than anything that could happen on this earth. So may thy kingdom come and thy will be done to heal us from unforgiveness. Because God, we want to flow in you. We want to receive from you. We don't want to be damned up in our spirits with bitterness and anger and resentment and judgment and criticalness and offense. We want to be free of all those things that come attached to unforgiveness. So God help us. 
We humble ourselves before you. We call it what it is. Because, Father, as we freely ask you for forgiveness, we want to receive it. So help us forgive freely. Move inside the depths of men's hearts and minds, God, so that your will can be done on behalf of forgiveness. And, Father, we pray, we pray that our generation, our sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and, and little Little, little ones that are belong to our friends and families, the next generations, God, will not be overshadowed, would not be bound in unforgiveness. Start to help them now to forgive free. With wisdom, trust may lead, the relationship may be broken and never the same, but teach them to forgive. May our children's 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 children not fall into the trap and the lie and the trickery and the bondage of offense and unforgiveness. We pray now that their hearts and minds are free. God, they may have to forgive us for something we did or said to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey. They may have to forgive us. Let it be so, so that their souls can be free. And most of all, their hearts can be right before you. That's our prayer for ourselves and the next generation. In Jesus' name, amen. And God, before we close out, we just ask you, as, as we have learned today, Give us what we need today, the insight, the patience. Give us the, the capacity we need today for whatever this day holds. Give us the prayers we need today as we are walking with you through this consecration. Some may start today on the consecration. Some may start next Wednesday. But we're asking you, Father, in this 12-hour time span that you would just come into it with us. Help us see things more clearly. Help us open up and get more transparent to you, with you. Help us dissolve and devour and just take this word into us where it becomes a part of us and walk it out. So help us today as we devote the next 12 hours to being in step and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. I, I'm so sorry, y'all. I was, you know, it's hard for me to do more than one thing at a time. So let me get on here and just say good morning, Claire. Good morning, Minister Edwards, Minister Hewlett. Good morning. Miss Kiana Stewart, good morning, Gladys. Good morning, my brother Comier. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, girl. The pictures is beautiful. Good morning, lady. Good morning, Attorney Fullerton. Good morning, beautiful Brittany Rose. Good morning to you. I love the way you guys greet each other. Mr. Keith Oliver, good morning, baby. Good morning. I think I hit everybody. Miss Dorothy, good morning. All right, all right. Y'all, I could just go on and on. I love you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you February 19th in person for the first time in two years. Again, it seems as though we are at capacity, but still, still, still. Let me share my screen. Send us your information if you are interested in coming. Because things happen in other individuals' lives and someone may cancel. We still have, let me count the weeks, y'all. We still have three weeks. We still have what, about three and a half weeks. So things happen in individuals' lives. So please, 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 um, 832-342-7587. 
um, just get in touch with me anyway through that text. I will confirm and keep in tech contact with you to let you know if a seat comes open if you really want to come. We're going to have wonderful refreshments. Um, hands off, your food will be boxed. Um, we're going to have a surprise for you. We're going to have a surprise for you. Yes, we are. You know, we love to love on people and give gifts. We are um, planning an awesome panel discussion for the last two chapters of the book. So get excited. I'm excited. Donations are appreciated. They are appreciated. You see the Cash App and the PayPal on the screen. And then I want to also back up this. And if you're interested in growing in your relationship with Christ Jesus, here are some opportunities on your screen that you have to do so. Just for My Soul Ministries is a discipleship ministry. We have uh, prayer moments, which you are a part of right now. Later tonight is our 9 p.m. conference call. Um, we have our second Saturday teaching sessions, our third, and of course, this is going to be um, our third Saturday's book studies. And 9.30, remember in February, is going to actually start at 10. It's actually going to start at 10. And then our soul healing session is this Thursday at 7 p.m., Facebook Live. So be sure to jump back on. And testimony interviews are as posted. Um, they are as posted. This is our contact information. Um, I also put it in the, the comments, the feed of this particular posting on Facebook. You'll see it in the comments, the feeds. You will see our website, our YouTube channel links in the feed. You'll see the conference call number for prayer tonight. Here's our ministry email address, phone number, website, and all of that good contact information stuff. And last but not least, before we leave this particular um, taping here, I want to pray for those and some of you that need to log off or understand for work, but I do want to have a quick prayer for those who are wanting and desiring a relationship with God. And, um, you know, you haven't been to church or in a church house or don't even know how that thing worked. That doesn't stop you from being saved. So if that is you, and this has been heavy on your heart, just look right into the screen and pray with me. Father God, I believe that you love me. God, I confess that I am a sinner. I have not been doing things right. As a matter of fact, I've been doing them my way in my own right way, I so thought. But I know that I need you in my life. I need forgiveness of my sin. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died for me. That, that he is my atonement. He's my replacement for the sin that I committed. His love allowed him to do that for me. I believe in his death, God. I believe in his resurrection. I believe you're coming back. So, Father, I'm submitting my life to you. I need you in my life. Father, here I am. Fill me up with your spirit. So not only do I ask for forgiveness, God, I invite you in. I believe in your son. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just that simply, you are saved. There's nothing complicated to it. His love is for all. Now, you get in touch with me with that contact information that I just showed you or DM me on Facebook or whatever. I can talk with you about any questions you may have about salvation. I can help guide you to a church in your area. I know many um, church homes that are Bible-based, teaching the word. You can get baptized. You can have a church family if you so choose. And at this point, it's all about now continuing to grow in your newfound faith in Jesus Christ, growing in intimacy with him. That's it. That's it.
but you gotta grow. You gotta grow up. You gotta grow. All right. You be blessed. Have a wonderful day. And always remember, always remember that God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.